Friedman, thank you so much for doing this. Thanks for having me, ladies. We've known each other for such a long time, it's actually hard to work out what to talk to you about. We have. Uh, the possibilities are literally endless. The interesting thing for me now is I say Mia Friedman, media mogul. What's your reaction when I say that? Oh, I want to hide under the chair. I don't think of myself that way. I, um, I just think of myself as a journalist and a writer. I, I use the, the words media mogul to see your response, but it actually does not surprise me at all that you are now a media <laughs> mogul. Having known you since you were the work experience girl, keen to get into yeah, magazines. My when, first boss ever. Were you 20? I was 19, 19 when I came and I met you and I was just in absolute awe. See, there were you were one of, I don't know, five that week that wanted to do work experience at Clio. But from the very first time I talked to you, I could see that you were seriously going places. And that was really interesting because 19, and there were a lot of senior journalists on the magazine at that stage, but I really wanted to harness your energy because it was such fresh, raw energy. And I always loved the fact that you didn't care what anybody thought. But that didn't always go down well with some of the other more senior oh, staff. No, it really Who didn't. kept saying to me, she's just a little bit over-enthusiastic. Um, and then of course, you know, worked your way up to become editor of Cosmo, then editor-in-chief of Dolly, Cleo, Cosmo. And then you entered the online world. Why, why was that? You, because you must have had a vision that others didn't. So with a magazine article, that's the beginning and the end of the conversation. It's like, you, it's, it's a statement. It's a one, it's one way traffic. But with online, it's the start of a conversation. And whether that conversation happens in the comments section on the website, um, on Facebook, whether people share it, that, that piece of content is, is dynamic and it moves. And I, I understood that that's where women were going. And as much as I was passionate about women's magazines, as you were, I knew that I wanted to be wherever the action was. And, and that was very much online in the, in the early 2000s. When you move into the online world, speed is absolutely almost number one uh, in terms of, you know, your priorities. I do mourn that, that the online world Judgment is of, often um, a casualty mm. because... So is nuance. You've, nuance, you've got to get the headline out there. Mm. Do you ever wrestle with that? I do. When I used to write a newspaper column, I used to love that process of you'd spit out all the words and then you'd go back and you'd massage them and you'd edit them. And with online, you don't have time. You spit them out and they're up and then they're sold and then you've got to spit something else out. Does that mean there's regrets every so often? I, I like being able to do both and I think that there's time for both and I think that's why we're finding there's a return to printed books. Now I'm buying books to hold and to touch and I don't want to read a book on, on a Kindle or on a, on a device. I want to actually touch it. I'm also listening to podcasts a huge amount more than I ever have because there's only so much time you can spend looking at a screen or reading. And I've got all this other time in my life when I'm exercising, when I'm driving, when I'm in the shower. Um, I would like to say when I'm cooking, but I don't cook. Who am I kidding? And I love being able to listen You've to content. You've got an elder son who does that for you. Yeah, I do Very have wise. an elder son when I can bribe him to do that. You mentioned short concentration span. Mm. Do you feel that that is a byproduct of the online world, that young women are being raised now? It's all about the attention grabber. And also yeah. that manners have become a casualty mm. of the online world, particularly when there's a comment section. Oh, yeah. I, I really find it frightening sometimes when I read the, con the comment section on sites. I've seen it on yours. Yeah. You know, before when, when we were working in um, magazines, if you had a problem or you disagreed with someone or some, had a different view, you would have to go and find a piece of paper, write a letter, look up the, where to send it to, buy a stamp, go to the post box, and that would diffuse all your anger yeah. and most people would not even go to that trouble. Now we've taken away that diffuser and we've replaced it with a megaphone and an audience. But now trolling has become an identity for people. It's become who you are. And it doesn't really matter what the issue is. They just want to go there and be angry. So I agree with you. I think the coarsening of public debate has become really sad. That, that is definitely a casualty. I have to say my youngest daughter is well, my only daughter is now 18. Mm. She said something very interesting to me recently. She said, Mum, I'm so glad that I'm not 
eight, nine, ten, and and growing up with Instagram, because I don't think I would have been able to cope. Do you fear for young girls yeah. and and their need, seemingly, to not only photograph everything they see, to photograph their daily lives, to be camera ready, and then to throw it out there for judgment to a world that doesn't even know them, whose opinions really shouldn't matter to them. And we've lost that time in our lives when we can be daggy mm. and not, not set up for judgment while we're still forming, particularly as young women. Absolutely, and I, I was reading the other day that swimsuit season for young girls now lasts all year round. That idea of constantly having to be um, desirable and we've taken objectification of women and we've turned the lens around and we've made it turned it into self-objectification yeah. and then you've got some women and young girls that are confused and calling that empowerment and it's it's like well no self-objectification is not empowerment um, and so I, you know, my, my daughter is 10 and um, I am teaching her already you do not index your self-worth to the number of likes you have or the number of followers you have. For kids, the phone and devices, the idea, it's not even, it's just who they are. It's an extension of their identity. And that's why, for example, with the whole um, nude selfies thing that's happening at the moment, people are so horrified because they see their phone and what's on it as an extension of themselves. And when that trust is breached and something happens, they're shocked that that could even happen because it is just part of who they are and part of how they live, part about how they go about their day. My sense for parents is that you've got to educate yourself. You can't just put your head in the sand and go, go climb a tree because they're not gonna climb a tree. They might climb a tree on an app. I'm not saying you give up and just let them be on screens all the time, but you have to understand the basics of social media, for example, because you can't police something that you don't understand. But surely there should still be rules within that. Yeah, but you can't make the rules if you don't understand the game. But but once you understand the game, limiting of course. access and time Absolutely. spent and making sure that that life is is, you know, a rich tapestry. Totally. You mentioned before that um, you and Jason work in the business together. We do. How do you find that? Mm, interesting. Because that's <laughs> That's like 24-7. Yes, it is. And the first couple of years was really hard. Having said that, I was feeling very burnt out. I'd been sort of running the website myself for about a year and a half and it was earning no money. And I knew it had to go further and I wanted it to get bigger, but I knew that I didn't have the time or the skills or the bandwidth to do it myself. And so him coming along um, because he would earn the same as me, which was nothing. Um, and <laughs> That's real a, equality. Yeah, and still above, <laughs> exactly, equality. There's no pay gap in our company. Two he people and I, on the board, <laughs> one male, one nothing. female. Exactly. We work in different parts of the business. Even when it was just the two of us in the lounge room or at home, we worked in different parts of the house. We've never shared an office. We've always driven to work separately and driven home separately. And... Um, I'd like, and we have separate bathrooms at home. So, you know, those yeah, things really? are helpful. Yeah, absolutely deal breaker. Is that a mess thing or is yes, it? Yes, it's a mess thing. Cupboard space? It's a personal space thing. Is it towels on the floor? Yeah, but it's all me. I'm the mess. He's the clean. So he couldn't <laughs> handle being with the mess. Of course you're the mess. You know how it works. <laughs> um, but we, we have the, having said that, there are times when, it'll be infuriating, you know, we'll be in a meeting and I won't be able to say, oh, shut up, will you just shut up? <laughs> and not say vice versa. Because then everybody's watching you too. Everybody's watching. Because you're the married couple. Everybody's the watching. So, um, you know, there are times when we've each tried to quit. And that's the other thing, you can't quit. So I've tried to quit and then he'll go, no, I quit. You can't, you can't quit because I quit. And then we just <laughs> laugh because it's so absurd. So can you see yourself walking away? Yeah, sure. I can, not, I, I love it. I mean, I'd have to jump straight into something else, yeah. but but um, I'm not, um, I, I love it passionately and I love everybody that's involved in the company and I love what we've built, but um, it's much bigger than me now. And I always wanted it to be, to grow to the level it, it has, it's had to uncouple from me. And that's been good for me and I think good for the company. Well, you are the Helen Gurley Brown of your generation. <laughs> <laughs> and you're wearing a mini skirt, so I we know. should probably take some photographs Helen now. Helen would be thrilled. Let's go. Are you comfortable with me taking a photograph of you? 
It's so, it's you so gonna trust bizarre. Me? Of course I trust you. You always look through an editor's eye. So, you know, being interviewed you and being interviewed by you and photographed by you, wow, it's a good day at the office. That's for good. Me. <laughs> well, I'm 10 points ahead before you've even started. Oh, so let's go. I will.